Hey, I'm outside working on terminal wire and I started building out the screen that's going to show the applications that people can manage. And I decided, hey, it'd be a good idea to show you how I build my applications using 100% flex components. All right, so first things first, we have this controller here. It's looking for action new. We're not using any of the new view files. So I include this helper I made, I'm calling it super view actions. And what Actions does is it maps the um, oops, application view. It's going to map these um, action names like new and index to the class names. So if we go back, hit save, go back, you can see that if I delete that, we're going to get view not found. Add that back. Look at this new error. No worries, we need to define a view template method. If we do that, hit render, we're good. All right, so I'm using this thing called a title component, which has like a subtitle, so we use that. There we go, cool. All right, so now I have an index. Now let's add a new view, because we want to be able to create new applications. Def view template. Let's add a button here. Render, actually no, we're gonna do a link. So a href and then new application path. Cool, auto correct work there. Oh no, uh, so this must be flex call. So let's go ahead and wrap this. I'm using Tailwind. So flex call do. All right, let's see if that fixes it. Great, it does. And let's get it. Let's go to a little bit of space. Let me use gap. Use it type. All right, gap eight. Fantastic. Cool. And I'm also using um, another framework for CSS called Daisy UI. I recommend checking it out because it works with Tailwind. So you can mix Tailwind classes with this. So we get a primary button, awesome. Now when we click new application, it'd be cool if we could have this title and all that stuff up here, so uh, for the new template. <clears throat> so what I'm actually gonna do is create a base view in here, and we'll come back to this in a second. Okay. Uh, so I don't want to use view template. I'm going to use a different one called a round template. You could think of this as a layout, which is kind of nice, but it's nested. So when I say super, it's calling application views around template and it wraps whatever I put inside of this block um, with that. So let's do that. Let's move the title into here. Oh, so move that up top. And then for our index view, um, we're wrapping it with main so we can delete that. All right, let's go back and see what we have here. So, looks the same. All right, oh, see I'm not inheriting from view. So that's why index isn't quite doing that yet. All right, so we're inheriting from that, fantastic. There we go. So this view template and also a new, <clears throat> it's gonna be rendered where this yield is. And then everything else renders, and then the application view, if it has a round template specified, which it should for your like global application layout, um, that's what it's gonna be calling. So let's click on new, and we're gonna see if we have what we expect. Yes, almost, but we don't wanna have the same title, right? We don't wanna do that. So what we can do is replace this with title and subtitle methods. This is one of the things that I like a lot about flex. All right, so let's create some empty methods here so that whenever we call that, if those aren't set, that's fine. Oh no. Oh, I specified these methods inside that method, so that's not working. Let's put these up here just for fun. Okay, so those are blank as expected. And what we need to do now 
is specify titles and subtitles in all of our subviews. So what do we have here? Title applications. Okay, manager applications. Thank you. Whatever algorithm you are. So let's save that. Uh, oh, we're in new. All right, so if we go back to index, let's call this apps just for fun. Cool. All right, and then let's go into new apps and we'll go ahead and set the title. Cool. All right, so create, I don't know, create a new app. You're one step closer to, <laughs> I don't know, creating your app. Fantastic. Okay, there we go. Awesome. So you can see we're able to have this kind of base view for all of our apps, um, and we're able to use just plain old Ruby to kind of specify the data. It's not in any other special spot. Uh, so that's kind of cool. But let's go a little bit further. We want to have a form that we could use. Oop, I'm clicking buttons. We want to have a form uh, for new, obviously. So let's try that. This is another technique I use called, um, I use a library called uh, super form and let's just build a super form so we have a render our view template this is where autocorrect is not going to work um, we're not autocorrect whatever this copilot thing is okay so an app has a name and a model and we just want an input so we can do that um, the cool thing is under the covers, this is just an input flex component. So you can do a lot of things with it. In our case, we just want to render it. Um, so when I hit refresh, I expect it to break because we don't, actually it won't break because we're not rendering the form yet. We'll get there. Okay, so now we have this form. And we want to render a form new. And then we have to pass it an application model. Oops, and I need to save. Surrender form.new. Okay, and then we'll also render the label for name. So we just say the field name. There we go. And what's cool is we can um, do something like this. We'll have a row method, um, attribute, because we're going to have a lot of rows. So we probably want to do something like this, right? And then this is attribute. And then we'll just replace this with like row, name, row, description. And you can see how easy that is to, to just deal with helpers and partials. I'm not even thinking about partials and helpers. I'm just coding in Ruby. Um, so we can do some things here like flex, flex row, and then we'll give it like a gap four. And that should pick up. I'm gonna do call just because I don't feel like styling that right now. Uh, and then of course, we could say flex, flex, um, call again, and then we'll give it a gap eight to space th those out in the form. And if I wanted to, I could do an around form on this or around template. Let's say we just don't want that in there. Um, if you have actually description as a text area, so if I kind of need to go off um, from this being an input, um, I still have access to like field description dot text area. I need to render that. I haven't adopted flux kits yet. Um, but yeah, you can kind of get, get a sense of how you can create macros for things or these methods. And then when those get in the way, because maybe you over abstracted, as they did in this case, it's pretty easy to get your yourself out of that. You can see here I was able to kind of get these there. So what I may actually do is um, you know, maybe this takes a block and I can pass two things into it. And if there's no block, then it 
as a, a label. There's just tons of things you can do because you're just writing Ruby. So that's a pretty decent overview of um, like how I approach applications. I like this. It feels a lot like I'm writing um, Sinatra applications. I just think it's very powerful to have everything in your views. And what's cool about that, some people don't want to have their views in their controllers. I get that to a degree. So whenever I get to that point, what I can do is create a folder. Actually, there already is a views folder in here called applications. So what I could do, let's just move index in here just for fun. So say index.rb. We'll take this out. We're going to have some problems with this inheritance right here. Um, but I'll kind of show you how that works. So let's throw this into index RB. Uh, this has to be in a module. So, um, let's go ahead and dent that. And then we're going to say applications index view. All right. So I told you it has some problems with inheritance on this. So let's try this out. We have to delete the inline. Actually, I'm in the wrong view. I'm in new. Let's go back. All right. So we can't find it. That's because we moved it into this other file. Um, I would move this in, in here and call it view. Uh, actually, I'll just go ahead and do that. Why not? We're here. Let's do it. So we'll create a new one called view.rb. So we put that inside the application module. Uh, view, we still have kind of our base view for applications. And then we inherit from our applications view into the index view. So that was kind of a roundabout way of getting there. Um, and then we include that module in there, and that's pulling view from applications. So that is how, if your application gets bigger, you can move your views out of the controller into their own view files. I actually find that's kind of unnecessary, uh, unless I have some kind of controllers where I need to share views between them. Um, but for the most part, it's fine just keeping the uh, the view code inside the controller. Again, it's a lot like Sinatra. It's a style that I like building applications in. I kind of have everything right there. Um, it's not for everybody, which is why you can move your views into their own folders. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can build Rails applications from the ground up, building with 100% components, no ERB. And uh, if you haven't, get outside. Hopefully it's nice where you live. See you next time.